to say something. A lot of people are confident, delivering really strong messages. <laughs> Doing quite well at pretending to be pissed off. Um, <laughs> let's let's go through that same exercise. We'll do it again, and instead of it being a, an annoying little halfback, <laughs> I want you to put yourself in a situation and imagine it's your wife, your boyfriend, girlfriend, significant other. So instead of a player talking to you too much, it's them talking to you too much and saying things that you don't appreciate. Now role play that and deliver that same message. <laughs> and tell them what they can't do. And then I think I heard one in that second one somewhere just said yes dear. <laughs> yeah. Smartest men in the room. Yeah. So I think there's, there's a couple of points. One is that uh, communication varies greatly depending on your audience. Uh, but also, you know, just evidence of the fact that you do have similar conversations or use the same skills in different parts of, of your life. So if you take nothing from this in a rugby context, maybe walk away and try and apply it in day-to-day -day life, to your professional life, socially. Um, perhaps not the exact same messages or the same language, but uh, hopefully the same skills. So effective communication, as we've said, it encompasses self-awareness, so understanding yourself. Now that might be how you're feeling, it might be your mood, it might be how you communicate, so what authentic communication looks like for you, and then part of it's also situational awareness. So understanding, if we think about the rugby context, understanding what's happening in the game, uh, understanding the pressures that the players are feeling, and just understanding, uh, I guess, kind of in general the occasion. So it might be a really big game, it might be a grudge match, it might be a game that, you know, the last time the two teams played, they were at each other, so there's, it might be a bit of added context. So if we look at self-awareness, if you've tried delivering a message when you're sad or angry, it probably goes without saying that that same message will be delivered very differently. So you think about somebody approaching you at work when you're really busy and you're under the pump, and you give them a response, it might be a little bit more uh, direct or a little bit more succinct than what it might be when you've got lots of time and you're actually just waiting for the day to end and you're pretty happy to sit there and let time go by. It's really important to be self-aware of your current state because just like it impacts on what you say, it also impacts on the way you come across to them. So if you're really uptight and you're really tense, and we all get like that, it's not that the message isn't don't be like that, but it's just have the recognition to understand how that might affect your communication. So both in terms of the words you use, but also in terms of the way you say it. And when we get to body language and, and things like that, you understand that there's a whole raft of things that are encompassed when you talk about uh, your language. And we introduced this idea of redhead and bluehead thinking. So who's heard of redhead and bluehead thinking? A few hands go up. They use it a lot when they talk about the All Blacks. And I, think, I think the All Blacks were kind of, um, at least day to day, they're known as some of the pioneers of redhead and bluehead thinking in a rugby context. And it's really, really important when we think about how you might be able to change your behaviour. So if we look at blue head and red head, so blue head is typically, when we talk about blue head thinking, that's what we talk about when we say, if you're in your blue head, you're, you're thinking calmly, you're loose, expressive, uh, you're in the moment, there's clarity of thought, right? there's clarity of expression, you're accurate and you're on task. So that's, that's where we're endeavouring to be all the time. When we're in our blue head, we're making good decisions, we're not flustered by what, what people are saying. We're not being influenced by external forces. But when we're in our red head, and, and look, people react differently, but for some, if we're in our red head, we might be tight. We might be a little bit uptight. We're desperate. We're becoming focused on results. 
So for example, if you've made a string of decisions and you might not be completely convinced at the accuracy of those decisions, that might start to play on your mind. You get in a bit of a negative trajectory. We start to get focused on thinking, shit, I'd better make sure this next decision's right. And if, I'm, if it's not right, I'm going to look like a fool. And if I start looking like a fool, they're going to be at me. So you get into that, you know, that downward spiral. You get anxious, possibly aggressive, and you start to overcompensate. So again, both a rugby and a non-rugby context. So I'll, I'll give you an example. Um, and I'm sure you won't mind me saying this, but in the week, so uh, Glenn Jackson in the weekend was refereeing the Hurricane Storms. <laughs> Really tight game. Okay, it was, if you watch that game, it was tight throughout. I mean, you know, the Hurricanes scored late to win it, but there was it was breakdown was a real shit fight, right? Like it was hotly contested. Teams were at each other the whole game, and you know it felt like that watching it. Jacko's a very calm referee. He's, a, he's an ex-player. He has a great rapport with players. Gets on really well with them, and it's it's very rare for him to to be flustered. He said there was one point in this game. Where Damien Dialande, the, the Stormers second five, came up to him and, and poked him, gave him a poke to try and tell him to refer something to the TMO. And Jacko turned around and said to him, If you touch me again, you'll be sitting down. Do you understand? Or words to that effect. So anybody, some of you might have heard that on, on the comms. Now he said for him, that was like a whole bit of, what the hell came out there? Where did that come from? It was just so at odds with how he usually re responds because all of a sudden, and I'm not necessarily saying he was in a redhead mode, but perhaps displaying some redhead tendencies that he might not otherwise. And so he was reflecting on that even during the game and had reflected on that by the time the game finished and had made the effort to go up to the player at the end and say, look, sorry, mate, that was, you know, I was probably out of line. In actual fact, what happened is the player, before he could even apologise, the player came back and said, sorry, sir, I shouldn't have touched you and I won't do that again. Great result for him in, in the occasion, but just an example. Yeah, Ron. How do you get yourself from red to blue? That is the the million dollar question. So that last question, you can almost ignore those. So how do you move from red to blue? And and I think, if, like if I answer it succinctly, it's not really a case of saying this is how you get. From red no, to blue. What do you do? You must have a strategy. Yep. So I, I know some people apply physical. We have physical triggers. So they might hit themselves or something if they if they can feel themselves winding up. Hit themselves and say, "Flush it. We'll move on. We'll start again." And that could be a mental trigger. I would say for me personally, um, it's actually not so much of getting back from red to blue. It's whether or not I can identify that I'm in the red zone. So it's it's. And this is me personally, it's not so much a challenge of saying, oh sh shit, I'm in the red zone at the moment, how do I get to blue? It's more a case of identifying that you might be in the red zone. And once you do that, you know, and you'll know individually what you need to do to get back into clear, you know, a clear space of thinking. It might be you just say to yourself, slow down, or just, just take a breath, right? And I think, you know, without using those exact words, that's probably some of what I would do. Is just kind of say, just, just slow down here. And look, we've all we've all had these moments, and probably more than I care to to remember of, of being in the red zone. Um, but that is the key question. So I guess if, I, if I'd encourage you to do one thing, go away and have a think about a what what gets you into the red zone. So there might be certain things in a game of rugby that really piss you off, right? There might be certain pictures you see that really annoy you. Whether it's a, a halfback trying to milk a I feel like I'm picking the halfbacks. A halfback trying to milk a penalty, or you know somebody pinning somebody to the ground and trying to, to milk that as they're not rolling away. There might be certain pictures that just really irk you, and are more likely to put you in the red zone. Certainly, there might be um, language that players use that you just don't like. You might have a real bugbear about people not calling you sir or ma'am, right? Now that you know, I'd suggest you don't. Don't get too wound up about that. But if that's you know if that's your thing, that might tip you into the red zone, or, or people using your name. So I think if you can identify what those things are, then you're far more likely to be able to bring yourself back to the to the blue, and just say actually, well, I'm not going to get my best results here. It might be you buy yourself some time as well. So seek to stay in the blue head. That kind of goes without saying. Um, sense the cues when you're entering the red head mode. That's probably what I what I'm getting at. So just identify what those triggers might be 
And then again, like I was saying, you could use a physical or mental trigger to get yourself back into blue head. So I know, uh, another example, take a guy like Cam Stone. So some of you might have heard of Cam. Cam's a top, might have 10 referee. He sometimes has, if he's going to do a big kind of time off moment and call a player out, he might ask an AR to come into his ear and say, Cam, slow down. And that's just to avoid the risk of him rambling and speaking too fast and, and you know, not conveying his message appropriately. So whatever it is, so I'm conscious that all of you have ARs or, or have that luxury, but you might <coughs> need to tell yourself to slow down. And that can be a trigger of saying, hold on, it's a big look at me moment in the game. What do I need to do when it's a big look at me moment? Just slow down. Pop myself some space. Situational awareness, that's understanding the environment before delivering the message. So understanding, and when we say the environment, that has quite a broad meaning. So that could be the environment as in you're delivering it to a captain who's under the pump, five metres out from his own line, with ten minutes to go in a game that he's losing. Or it could mean, you know, the environment is 10,000 people, 200 people, two of your favourite people, whatever it is, something that, that is in that environment to mean that, that you might be influenced by certain things. So understand the environment. Actually take a you know, moment to acknowledge that. And if you can acknowledge that it's a challenging environment, you're more likely to be able to deliver a message that you're comfortable with. So what's the issue that needs to be addressed? Who needs to hear the message? So are you going to say something and try and say it to everybody in the team? You know, if, you, if you're not happy with the trend, you're not going to try and address every one of those players individually. Or are you just going to talk to a captain or talk to a particular player who you know, might be the issue? And how do you do that? When we talk about the, the occasion, are you going to have one of those big time off spotlight on you moments or are you just going to have a quiet word in downtime? Again, these are questions that, that you might you know, work through at the time. What's my currency like? And I'll get currency in a moment. What's the outcome that I'm looking for? How will you know your message is understood? Sometimes it might never be understood, right? You might be dealing with captains or, or players who aren't particularly um, you know, on the same page as you, but you might just have to wear that and do the best that you can to be able to relate to them, just like you try and relate to different people and outside of a rugby context. So currency, it's, uh, it's a real shame that John O'White's not here, for those of you who know John O'White, John used to talk a lot about currency and understanding that your words on a rugby field are like currency. The idea being that you, you've effectively got a fixed amount of currency with players and every time you say something to a player, you're making a withdrawal and your balance goes down and every time it's effective and they understand that message, you make a deposit, you get a little bit more currency, they give you a little bit more. So it goes back to that concept we always talk about white noise. We talk about white noise. If you talk at someone all day, if you go through every ruck and you say, hands away, you go the next ruck, hands away now, and you go, hands away, it just loses impact. And they go, well, he says that every ruck, so, you know, it must be fine. So, it's the same point. If you're going to talk to a captain every two minutes and give them something to work on, your balance, your currency goes down. And then when you actually really need to say something, when you really need to say, next one's going to the bin, you've lost currency, he's given up on you. And we'll work through some videos soon, and you'll see examples of where people have and haven't understood the message that's being delivered. And we've got a few Super Rugby clubs. I understand we're not refereeing Super Rugby on a Saturday, but my challenge to you is you try and tell me, you try and find one of those situations that you've never had before. Because there's, you know, they'll bear a, a degree of similarity to what you see on a Saturday. When you have no currency, the players stop listening and you become less effective. So it's all well and good to give this great message that is absolutely perfect for the occasion, but if they're not listening and they're not going to do anything about it, then you may as well not say it. Right? Just like when we talk about when you talk to players in a game, right? Like if you're saying something in the 79th minute, saying the next one's going to go to a bin, and he's going to go, yes, well, good on you, mate. Thanks for that. I'll deal with that next time. It won't happen next time because I've got one minute for last night with the ball. So this is a bit of a template for an effective communication process and I, I just, the key thing guys is that I, I'm not necessarily saying you need to follow this to a T. Okay, this is a template. If, I've, if you take nothing else out of this 
presentation. Be authentic for one. So do you and be aware. So we've talked about awareness in a situational or a self context, but the other part be authentic. So this is a really good template for running through an interaction with a captain, particularly if you're a player, particularly if you're trying to bring about change. And when we go through the videos, I want you to think about whether or not that, that happened. Um, there's a role play scenario here, but I think in the interest of time, we'll just keep moving. So blue threes cause the scrum to collapse three times, and you want to put the player on a warning. So if we think about that, right, this might be your template. So, you know, you might call out blue three, or you might call out, you know, the captain or the front rows. We've had three penalties against you now, all for collapsing. I need more height, and I need you to bring your feet up. It doesn't change if we go to the bin. Do you understand? And look, you might have variants of that. You might not like saying he's going to the bin. You might not like committing yourself to that. You might not like telling them what they need to do if you're not confident of what the cause is, right? But it's a, it's a pretty decent template and something that you can think about. And you might go away and think, well, what's my communication process? What is, what is a really good process for, you know, for Maggie look like? <coughs> it might be different to what a good process for Richard looks like or a good process for Henry looks like. So we'll go through these examples and a couple of clips, like I say, they're from Super Rugby and Test Matches. And I want you to be thinking about these things. So was the referee in control of themselves? So, in other words, who was in control in this interaction? Did the referee have good situational awareness? So neutral space, do we know what we mean when we talk about neutral space? So, so some won't know what that means. So if you think about it, where you choose to have an interaction is really important. So particularly if you're going, you know, time off, you can choose to have the conversation there in the middle of the ruck with eight players from one team and another six from others, and you can sit there and try and talk to everybody and run the risk that you know, three of them chip back with something and you know, two from the other team tell you what to do and the other two say you should be doing the opposite and that you've got a you know, six foot four guy looking down on you with all his mates behind him. Or you can buy yourself some neutral space and take them away. So you might go and you might see it all the time, there might be a breakdown, and guys, you know, if they're on the tree and they'll go penalty, time off, come here. And they'll walk over here. And all of a sudden you isolate the player and you take him away from all his mates. So it's just you and him, and he's in your space. And you decide where he goes. Or you might, instead of saying to a captain and walking over to the captain over there to have a chat to him, you might say, come here. And I think it's really important to be aware then that at that point, the game can't start until they do what you say. Now, you might feel rushed. You might feel like you want to get that out of the way. But that might be one of those, just buy yourself some time. You've got all the time in the world. Captain, come here. He might not come, because it'll be, odds are, he'll try not to come, alright? But he's got to eventually. Or you get him to bring the player to you if the player doesn't want to come. You know, if you've got a good working relationship with the captain, the captain bring me six, you know, six blue. So these are all techniques you can use. When you think about, was the issue explained? Was the change required explained? So did they tell them what they needed to do? And did the players understand? So just think at the end of that, of these interactions, did the player get the message? They might not agree, but did they get the message? And is there anything they should have done differently? So we'll go through this one first. Oh. We will, we'll turn the sound off. 